Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. I'm so glad you've joined me today. This is session two of Hearing God's Voice, a beautiful and wonderful journey. Uh, let's just review just briefly from last week. We said there's nothing so precious and valuable as hearing His voice. We saw from the Bible that God wants to speak to us. He created us to have fellowship with Him. And we talked about some of the ways that you can hear him. Of course, words are very important. We know that our words carry the power of life and death because we're made in God's image and he spoke the worlds into existence. So there's creative power in our words, but there's also a destructive power because sin entered in. So he wants to redeem words for us by speaking to us, because his words are always good, life and light. We also said there's many other ways he speaks to us. He is a spirit, and so he interacts with our spirit in ways that don't involve words. Uh, we said we can uh, have a revelation of him from the Bible, from teachers, from friends, paintings, billboards, signs, nature, songs, dreams and visions, um, repeated numbers, uh, the gift of prophecy we can hear him through. Uh, someone reminded me of how much the Father has been speaking to us in these days through cloud formations, allowing us to see the, the, the host of heaven on the move and rainbows in like unusual places, like when it even has not even been raining. There are rainbows and double rainbows appearing, and it is God saying to us, I keep my promises. Uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me of a story when I was uh, making the notes for today's program about a sign giving a message. Um, most of you are probably familiar with Francis Frangipane. He's been a teacher in the body of Christ for uh, many, many years. And he told the story of he was driving to a speaking engagement and he brought a friend along. And the friend was just laughing uproariously because he said, this place you're going, they're not gonna receive you. They're not gonna believe what you say. They're like really set against this. They're really religious. And he's going on and on laughing about this. And Francis could feel his faith like shrink, 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 and he's like crying out in relief of the Holy Spirit to encourage him. So they were driving through a little town and drove by a, a hotel called the Franciscan Hotel. But the sign, somehow the words, the letters had gotten somewhat separated. And so it said, Francis can. <laughs> and he received that message from the Holy Spirit and he felt his faith rise up and he had a great speaking engagement. <laughs> it can be God's voice, spontaneous thoughts, words, pictures, that they light on our mind. We think, where did that come from? Uh, and sometimes it's the enemy, but sometimes, and most often, it's God. He's speaking to us through those. We need to follow through with them. Like if a friend's face keeps popping in your, your mind, Take that as a cue, you are to be praying for them. We need to partner with God in learning to hear His voice. We need to value our spiritual eyes and ears. And we gave the Holy Spirit permission to awaken and train our spiritual eyes and ears. So your assignment last week was to get a journal and to write down all the ways that you heard from Him this past week. Because I only mentioned a few ways. There's a multitude of ways. After this video is finished, uh, would you please add some of the ways that you heard his voice in the comments section? I wanted to mention two dreams that I had where the father was forecasting the future to me. Now, I didn't realize that's what he was doing when I had the dreams. In fact, I didn't even remember having the dreams. Uh, but every morning, I will go back and read my journal entry from a year ago before I do a new journal entry. And I also go back in my dream journal and read what I have dreamt a year ago. Uh, so these two um, programs, or two 
uh, dreams were about some prophetic uh, people that I knew of. Uh, and I think most of you know, I uh, co-host some uh, of the Window into the Supernatural programs for His Glory TV. And I've been doing that since January of this year. Well, two of those interviews that I ended up doing this year, I had a dream the year before I did those interviews that I was talking to this prophet. And I just, you know, dreams are mostly symbolic, so I thought it was just representing the prophetic voice or whatever. But it turned out God was speaking the future to me. Now, I, I had no clue when I had those dreams that I'd be doing interviews for Window into the Supernatural. So, uh, but then when I reread the dreams a year later, I realized he was telling me something about my future. And he wanted me to know when I was experiencing that future that his stamp of approval was on it. So in case you're wondering, those dreams were about Wanda Alger and Barry Wunsch. And I never dreamed that I would have an opportunity to speak one-to-one -one with them. So it's been a great privilege and honor to do uh, that program. If you haven't uh, watched it, check it out. There's another delightful co-host, Jordan Oliver, and it's on hisglory.me. You can find those in the, I think you look up the programs or shows. I think it's the shows tab and you can catch uh, all the ones of, of a window into a supernatural. So, and this, just the mention of Barry Wunsch um, brings up a, uh, an experience that I just had of hearing God's voice, discerning his leading. And it came because of a word that Canadian prophet Barry Wunsch released on September 22nd. Now, it's a very serious warning word, but there's good news in it as well, which I love. I love when, because God balances out warnings with wisdom and with future good. So what uh, Barry Wunsch heard, and he shared this with fear and trembling, he said, um, what he heard was, Barry, the next few days are going to be critical. The world you, as you know it is about to change forever. There's going to be an event. He said he saw an attack coming, but it was not as it appeared. Now, I can confirm that because the Father has continually told me they want to make something appear really bad, but he's already taken the power out of it, and we're to partner with him in praying that as well. So anyway, he goes on to say, obey the EBS, which is the Emergency Broadcasting System, when it comes. Barry, tell my people to stay inside as instructed. It'll be clear when it's safe to come out. So things are going to run hot for a few days, the Lord said. I have to hide my people, and it's not the first time. Then he said, watch the USA, the Northeast, because that's where he saw the attack coming. He said, those who've been asleep are going to wake up. The enemy has ramped up his game because he has nothing to lose. And, but the father says, the enemy has nothing on me. Barry, he said, tell my people not to fear, but to celebrate as it unfolds. You'll see my hand at work as I pull the carpet out from under them. The great awakening is upon you. This is not to bring fear to my people, but rather show them the path I have for them. These are days of biblical importance. Don't take your eyes off of me lest you come into fear and unbelief. Have I not told you? Have I not given you warning? What is about to happen will change the nations forever. The powers of darkness have nothing to lose and time is not on their side. For as the year comes to an end and a new one begins, you shall enter into a new era. This shall be the worst of days and the best of days. I believe that's the worst of days for the wicked the best of days for God's people. 
<clears throat> you're about to call you're about to know me as never before I really like that because that's what I my desire is for you in learning to hear his voice is that you'll know him as never before I mean he God is the most brilliant personality in the universe there's no end to his glory and the wonder of who he is. And he's inviting us to hear his voice and know him. Wow. Um, so there's a little bit more there, but uh, it ends with arise, arise, arise. Take your place and take your stand. This is the hour. This is the time. Be empowered and released by the fullness of my spirit there's nothing that we cannot do together so let your faith arise and your enemies be scattered holy is the word of the lord so i want to be completely transparent with you because i want you to learn from my experience when i first heard this word i assumed always a mistake that the word was saying that in a few days we were going to have this emergency broadcast symbol uh, warning signal come and that the world would be radically changing and that the planned attack was mentioned for the northeast part of the united states well coincidentally with this word being released my husband and i had planned a few days getaway for this period of time um, and it might not be for you guys as much, but us girls, like if we think there's danger or something bad is going to happen, we want to be home. We want to be, we want to be, have all our chicks under our wings and be right here where we're comfortable. So did I mention to you that our trip was planned? We were going to the Northeast. Yeah. So I'm asking the father, what do we do? What, was the emergency broadcast signal going to come and stop our trip? I didn't want to disappoint my husband, but it seemed like we were heading into a danger zone. When I asked Father, should we go? All I felt was his peace. And so we went on our little journey. As you know, we have not had the EBS warning nor an attack on our Northeast as of yet. Our trip was peaceful and fun, and the best part, I literally felt the Father's pleasure in me for following His peace and not giving in to my fear. So it's been a good, a good lesson for me. Uh, the day before we were to return home to the Carolinas, my safe place, it became evident that the hurricane that had just been through Florida was coming up to touch our area. They had predicted as high as 60 mile per hour wind gusts. Um, yikes. So it was a really good lesson for me to learn that what I think of as a safe place is not necessarily that. My safe place is being in the will of God. That's my safe place. Oh, just to let you know, too, we definitely uh, survived the remnants of the hurricane. Just have a lot of branches and leaves down and never even lost power. So I'm very grateful to the Father for his lessening of the storm and protecting us. So I want to go back now over Barry Wunsch's word because I realized I had read it with a filter of my own rather than hearing what the Father was actually saying. So let's go back over it with some new eyes. And I will just tell you right now, we would do well to process prophetic words with the Holy Spirit so that we don't read into it our biases, we don't jump to conclusions, we don't cry out false prophets, it never happens, because we don't understand his timing and his ways like we should. <laughs> so what Barry heard was, Barry, the next few days are going to be critical, period. That's all. They're just critical days. There was nothing really that said something was going to happen then. They were just critical, probably for our intercession and prayers. 
The world as you know it is about to change forever. There's nothing in that statement that says that will happen in those next few days, but it is something that's in our future, and I think our near future. There's going to be an event. Didn't say when. It does tell us where. It does tell us instructions of how to stay safe and how to um, rejoice because good changes are coming. Uh, so anyway, um, I just wanted to share that with you because uh, it was a real good experience for me in learning. Um, I need to follow the voice of the Lord. Definitely. So, um, <clears throat> I wanted to mention two ways that I've found very helpful in discerning God's will when you are faced with certain situations or decisions. And number one is feeling his peace. And that is a major hallmark of knowing, of, of you knowing if you're in his will or not. If you're feeling anxious, pressured, or fearful, wait until you feel his peace before making a move or reaching a decision. You will not regret that. The second way I'll mention about discerning his will, when someone asks you, like, if you'd like to do something, like they, they want you to do a certain ministry or a new job or you're, they want you to go somewhere with them, I want you to notice what rises up in your spirit because your spirit is attached to Holy Spirit. You will either have a feeling of life, oh yeah, I want to do that, or you'll have a feeling of death or just mm, flatline. His ways are not complicated. He wants us to know his will and to choose to partner with him. So he gives us these very simple tools, his peace. And because he's the God of life, if this is a good opportunity for you, life will spring up in you and you'll know to say yes. All right. Let's move on now. We are going to delve into the four keys to hearing God's voice. And this is going to lead us into journaling His voice. I learned this teaching from Mark Verkler many, many years ago. Uh, he now has a worldwide ministry and he continues to teach this all over the world. It has opened the door for many people who could never hear God's voice to hear his voice. I want you to look forward to this because it's going to be good. He struggled to hear God's voice for eight years. I'll mention that he is a very intelligent man and he was totally schooled to think out of the left side of his brain, which is your analytical thoughts and how you logically arrange things and learn things, as opposed to the right side of your brain, which is where uh, intuition is, creativity, imagination. Now we need both sides of our brain because they balance each other out. But I will tell you that uh, for most of you, this could be a little bit of a shift because we have been taught, even in the church, to process everything with the left brain, the analytical way of thinking, which is really a Greek mindset that found its way into our school system and then into seminaries and into the church. Uh, let me give you an example, as opposed to, so Greek thinking, analytical, as opposed to Hebrew thinking, which is more right-brained, it is pictorial, it is sound-oriented, it is number-oriented with meanings attached to everything, and it is that creative, spontaneous part of your brain. This is how uh, two different mindsets would respond to the question. Um, tell me about your faith in God. The left brain Greek thinking person will give you a whole list of theology and doctrines and why we believe that. The Hebrew mindset will tell you, look at my life. 
It's the way I live that is speaking because I not only believe those things with my head, but they are in my heart. So that's why it's so important for us to have both of those. We can logically uh, understand faith, but it has got to move over into the intuitive side because that is where our spirit picks up knowledge and revelation from. It is where God's voice will come to us into that right brain. So anyway, finally, after eight years, Mark finally broke through. God showed him a very simple couple verses in the book of Habakkuk that spoke to him about how to go about this. It's Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 and 2a, just the beginning of that second verse. And this is Habakkuk speaking. He says, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint or my questions. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets. So we can do that. We can write in a journal. You can write actually in an iPad or your phone, however you find uh, it's best to keep your journaling but it's got to be a way that you can access it again because you want to go over them again and again so these are the four keys to hearing god's voice that mark verkler took out of those verses in habakkuk the first one is stillness we are to quiet our heart and mind and we are to fix the eyes of our heart on jesus and that's what climbing up to that watchtower is. It's getting above what's going on in the natural realm, looking with spiritual eyes and being on guard to see what the Father is going to say to us. As we focus, John Paul Jackson used to say all the time, what we focus on, we make room for. If you're focusing on negative and fear-based things, you will be fearful. If you are focused on Jesus, what he is speaking, the good news, the, the encouragement that he's releasing to us in these days, you are going to be moved over into your right brain and ready to hear the voice of God. So we have stillness, we quiet our heart and mind. Then we're going to tune to spontaneous flow. Let me read you John 37, John 7, 37 to 39a. And this is speaking of Jesus. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who's thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. When he said, living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. So we see from these verses that the Holy Spirit is a spontaneous flow. He is the river of life that's flowing from the throne of God, and it is always moving, it is never still, it never stops, and that carries the voice of God. God is always speaking, continually, continually communicating to us. And we will hear him and be aware of him when we tune in to the spontaneous flow. So quiet your voice, tune to the flow, then you're gonna have vision. You are gonna look to see in the spiritual realm what is going on. Because if you noticed in that verse in Habakkuk, it's kind of odd wording. There I will wait to see what the Lord says. So God is going to use not only words, but pictures to be communicating with you. And when you see things, write those down as well as the words that you hear. And some people will see more than others. Some people will hear more than others. You just go with what Holy Spirit has made you to be, but be ready to expand into more and more. In the Gospels, Jesus 
said something that kind of puzzled me years ago. He said he only did what he saw the father doing. I thought, how does he see what the father is doing? It's because he was doing this. He was quieting his heart. He was tuning to spontaneous flow. And he was looking to see what the father was doing. And when he saw that, he did it. He did it in the natural realm. And then the fourth step is to journal or write what we hear until the flow finishes. Pretty simple. Uh, we are actually going to practice journaling his voice together. So if you don't have your journal and your pen, pause the video and go get them. All right, everybody ready? We're going to lay a few, uh, some groundwork here to this experience we're going to have together because I'm going to journal with you as well. First thing to do is relax. Just relax. Take this out of the right and wrong categories. I promise you, if some of your own voice happens to appear among God's voice to you, he will not strike your journal with a lightning bolt. I'm positive. He is longing for you to come to him, for you to hear his voice. I want you to listen to Song of Solomon, verse four, or chapter four, verse nine. For you reach into my heart. That's speaking of us, his beloved. With one flash of your eyes, I'm undone by your love. I am overcome by merely a glance from your worshiping eyes, for you have stolen my heart. In other words, if we just turn our eyes and look at him, it wrecks his heart. It undoes it. He so longs for us to know him and to hear his voice. God's voice is going to sound like your voice. And actually, when the enemy tries to taunt you, it's going to sound like your voice too. We know it's not our voice or the enemy's voice. We can tell it's God's voice when it is something very encouraging, very life-giving. And it expresses thoughts that we, we've never thought, words we've maybe never used. There's just a quality to it that we know is not our own. This did not come from me. Now you may wonder why God speaks to you in your own voice. And I think it's because he honors our free will so highly. If he were to use his voice, which is the voice of many waters, it is a powerful, powerful voice. And I think it would overwhelm us. So he wants to speak to us in a way we can hear and understand. You're also going to know that, oh, and I wanted to include this too. He's, he's going to speak in the first person to you. He might call you by name, or he might call you son or daughter or child. And it will be your style of speech and your educational level. Although he's always coming up with words that I'm like, what the is that word and <laughs> looking it up so he will um, probe your boundaries and help you to learn more when the holy spirit inspired the word of god he joined himself to the writer and spoke through that writer's personality that's why we can tell when you're reading a verse yeah this sounds like paul no this is peter's style it's because god does not eradicate our personality he just wants to be joined to it. So he joins your personality and flows out through your personality. That's why my journal entries are going to sound very different from your journal entries. He is going to speak to you according to who you are and what means the most to you. Uh, one of my daughters, um, actually my oldest daughter, who introduced me to Mark Verkler, uh, her journal entries are so fun and so full of mercy. Um, they're just beautiful. They're not at all like mine. And it's because she's a different person than I am. 
different giftings, different um, things that are important to her. So now I want you to know after you go through the four steps, I want you to be ready to start writing immediately because the father will begin to speak immediately or it can be Jesus that speaks to you or Holy Spirit whoever um, that what resonates with you he's he's fine with that but he is going to start speaking because he's been waiting to speak to you do not try to judge what you're hearing that's the left brain don't argue with what you hear just write it down. You can always go back over it later and judge what you're hearing. I'll guarantee that what he says about you will surprise and delight your heart. He's a good, good father who sees your uh, seeking heart in the way that you love him. So the question that I want you to be asking the father to answer is, how do you see me? So you might want to jot that down. How do you see me? It's going to shock you. <laughs> A good shock. <laughs> okay, let's go over our four keys that we're going to do before you start to journal. I'm going to have you pause the video and we're going to do the journaling right now and then come back and finish when you're done hearing that spontaneous flow. So we're going to quiet our hearts. We are going to tune to flow. We're listening for that flow of the Holy Spirit. We're also looking with spiritual eyes to see if there are pictures he's showing us. And then we are going to journal. Okay? All right. Anything else I wanted to say about that? Nope. I think we're good. All right. Let's do it. Be back in a few. All right, we're back. Um, I'm going to read to you what I heard because I haven't asked the Father this question for a long, long time. Um, and I know that all of you heard some beautiful things that touch your heart. Is that what you really see in me, Father? I mean, it just encourages you to press on and press in even more, doesn't it? So this is what he spoke to me today as I journaled with you. My faithful and patient one, waiting with full assurance that what I have promised, I will do. All of heaven honors the good report you give. Wow. Just like Joshua and Caleb, who saw the giants as their bread and believed that I was who I said I was. Thank you, Father. That's, that's very encouraging, very encouraging. So I hope um, that you were blessed as you did this. Your assignment for this week is to journal as often as you can the um, most effective question that I've learned to ask the Father for journaling is, Father, what's on your heart today? And he'll give me his perspective. But I do want to assign one question that I'd like you to journal for sure on, and that is, what would you like to say to me about our relationship? What would you like to say to me about our relationship. So uh, God bless your journaling this week. Uh, and we'll be going over uh, these four keys again and just talking about what might hinder us from hearing or stop the flow or just delve into as many things as we can to make it the most fruitful for you. Would you please, uh, in the comments, Leave me a couple sentences, a paragraph of what you heard when you journaled. I'd like to give you some feedback on it. Um, normally this is a live class, so I get uh, to hear people share spontaneously, but um, this will have to do and we'll make it work. And I would love to hear what you heard when you were journaling. 
So Father, we thank you. You are awesome and glorious. Thank you so much that you want to speak to us. That so touches my heart. And I want to respond by seeking you and setting aside time to quiet myself before you, to hear your amazing voice. I just pray a blessing on all who hear this video, that they will be inspired and equipped by Holy Spirit to hear and journal your voice and to begin the adventure of a lifetime in hearing your voice. Thank you, Father. God bless you all. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it.